My name is Grace Kim. I am the Ex Companion Animal Extension Assistant for the state of Nebraska, and welcome to our first webinar series. We will be hosting these once a month, first Thursday of every month at 6 p.m. live via Zoom. Um, and tonight's topic will be over basic, basic health for small animals. So to start off is just general care. Um, to keep small pets healthy and happy, you need to make sure to have a dry and clean cage, plenty of fresh water, a healthy and balanced small pet diet, toys, and interaction with your owner or even depending on the animal with other animals. Um, so we'll go, we'll talk about each one of these topics through the slides. Diets and treats. So most, most small pets or small animal pets are herbivores. So that means that their diet consists of solely just plant material. Um, ferrets are considered carnivores and then hedgehogs are omnivores. So plant and um, meat eaters are the exceptions. So in order to have a healthy balanced diet, a specially fortified food such as fresh hay, fresh greens, and healthy treats are great for small pets. Uh, small diets, small pet diets should consist of pelleted food made specifically for their species. Most high fiber fortified food should make up about 70-75% of their diet with unlimited amounts of fresh water. So usually those diets that contain mixtures of seed, nuts, or flavored kibble are not ideal. They are often not the healthiest of foods either for their diets. Um, small pets tend to just eat the sweetest parts, so they won't get all the nutrients that they really need. Hay, such as timothy, oat, or orchard grass are like the best types of hay to feed your small animals. Um, supplying that grass hay to stimulate natural foraging and nesting helps um, prevent obesity in those animals. Specifically, ham hamsters and gerbils especially enjoy oat hay, which is often, often contains tasty, immature seed heads. Alfalfa hay should be reserved for animals that need those higher nutritional needs, such as mothers or old or sick um, small animals too. Other healthy options for fresh greens to add to your small animal diet can be kale, romaine lettuce, dandelion greens, spinach, or oregano. So those are great options for those, the diets of your small animals. Next is interaction and socialization. So more, the more time you spend with your, you spend with your small pet, the more social it'll be, it'll be become, it will be with you. So they usually become very bonded to their humans or owners and through spending time playing or cuddling outside of their cage that they live in. Um, interactions with humans on a daily basis um, is important for small animals, especially if they are housed alone. And if they are handled, they need to be handled gently and with slow movements. Small pets are, usually, are prey animals, so they will startle easily at loud noises or sudden movements. Um, that's why you have to handle them very gently so they're used to being handled and um, they don't get scared as easily. Um, some pets are very social and need interaction with their people, especially those um, who must be kept without a, a cage mate. Some pets really do well with cage mates. So for example, guinea pigs and fancy mice love having little companions with them in their cages. Housing is also another great topic to know about and be educated about with small animals. Small pets are often kept in enclosures that are too small. So you need to make sure that the, their enclosures or cages are big enough so they can exercise and play. So um, most of those pets enjoy having zones for eating, then playing and sleeping and using the restroom. So plenty of space to run and play in their cage is, use, is crucial for small pets. Some small pets such as chinchillas do well with using shelves or vertical space compared to just floor space, so different levels would be great. Um, 
depending on the species, they, it depends on the amount of space they need. So the next slide we'll talk, I'll show you some cages that might be, that might not be the best for your small animals. Um, veterinarians are, or a good website, a good reputable website would be a good place to learn more about space requirements depending on your small animal versus a guinea pig or a mouse or a gerbil to know the adequate sizes of cages. And small pet cages, cages should be spot cleaned daily, so each day, to remove any waste or food, excess food. So clean and dry bedding is very important. For example, shredded paper or aspen bedding is the best. Um, other types of bedding, such as cedar and pine, can actually cause respiratory irritation for those small animals. Here are some pictures of inappropriate cages. So these types of cages pictured don't really provide good hiding or burrowing, burrowing places for your small animals. They don't really have enough space for that small animal to run or play and explore. So getting that exercise in for them, it may look like it, but they're definitely not big enough. It's also important that small pets have much more space and for more activities for their cage than they can. Both of these cages pictured are considered inappropriate cages because they don't provide adequate hiding and burrowing places. They don't have enough space for that small animal to run and play or explore. So getting that exercise in um, for their health. It's also important that small pets have much more space and far more activities in their cage than they can in these. So making it bigger, more activities would be best. Now these, they look rather large, but both of these pictures or um, cages pictured um, provide plenty of space and exercise and play for your small animal. They also have enough hiding places and toys that, you can, that can keep your small pet entertained. Also um, provide what the small pet needs to practice their natural behaviors. So if so examples would be chewing and burrowing, so having enough bedding so they can burrow in different levels. Um, small pets also need cage setups similar to these with plenty of space and activities in order to be happy, happy and healthy. So those fun little tunnels, they have different locations, different activities are good for your small animal pet. Enrichment and dental care are very important. Small pets have teeth that grow throughout their lifetime, so they don't lose teeth, they just can slowly continue to grow. And so providing enough chew toys to keep their teeth healthy in length so they don't get too long um, and it's hard for them to eat. Chew toys can be um, provided for these types of pets. So chewing and provides enrichment and keeps teeth at a healthy length. Using hay in small pet diets can also keep their teeth short, so because that roughage is a little, is very dense, it'll take, it will, it will require their teeth to do more work. If all else, if all else fails, small pet teeth can be trimmed by your veterinarian. Um, obviously get, um, get advice from your veterinarian before just assuming that they need it, but definitely keeping an eye on those teeth because overgrown teeth are painful and can lead to small pets refusing to eat if you don't if you don't check their teeth. Enrichment can come in different forms and ideas, so tunnels and tubes that they can chew on or hide or sorry, run through for enrichment. Um, hideouts in cages so they can run around and hide or come out. The chew toys to keep their teeth at a healthy length. Food puzzles, you can make these homemade or get them from a store. Or you can use toilet paper tubes for homemade enrichment. At the top right, that kind of shows a little toy that they've made out of the toilet paper tubes. Small pets also need penny. Again, plenty of bedding and space for digging and burrowing to continue that enrichment. It's also a natural behavior to do in their own home. So making sure you provide all those different aspects for your small animal pet. Lastly would be health. Um, health is obviously very important to any animal. So having 
um, annual visits with your veterinarian. Some small animal pets will require yearly vaccinations or, um, or other checkups. So knowing the signs that your um, pets might be sick is also good to know. Usually these signs listed are kind of generalized. So obviously if your animal isn't eating or drinking, that's, that's a good sign of um, them being sick, scratching, sneezing, labored breathing, that respiratory um, sign, limping, diarrhea. So all these different aspects that you want to look out for when you check on your, your animal daily. And recognizing some of these signs could really save your small animal if you can acknowledge them quickly. Some small pets, such as ferrets, for example, need those annual vaccinations. So knowing the type of animal you have, getting advice from your veterinarian, um, will all play into your small animal health. Thank you guys for getting on tonight. Um, our next month, get on for our next month. Um, we are still determining a topic. If you have any suggestions, please go to the webpage and we do have a survey and we do ask any topics that you would like to know more about or ask questions about. We will hopefully have other presenters throughout this webinar series, so feel free to check in. If you have not, if you were not able to get on live, we will actually post this recording on our Companion Animal YouTube page if you want to watch it again or see it for the first time. Thank you guys. Bye.